let's take a moment and let's go back to the application object that that top level found within our VBA environment here. So I'm back inside of Excel. I'm back inside the VBA window and I'm looking at the immediate window. Now I'm going to type something out here and I want to communicate with the application. We saw earlier, I'm going to say question mark application. I'll hit my enter key and yep, we're working with Microsoft Excel, right? All right. So that's the application level, but the application object has methods just like the worksheets object, right? We can get into things like its name inside there uh, and among other methods. But I wanna get into some properties, properties that deal with the application. Well, application, wait, oops, spell that correctly. Type in application, I'll hit dot, get that dot notation in there. Then I've got a list of all of those properties and methods. So you got the little brick flying through the air, you got a, a method, and then you got the little finger pointing at the paper, right? Those are all your properties. So one of them, and a very common one, is active cell, right? What's the active cell? What do I currently have selected within my application? Okay. Now, this might sound like one that should be really be tied to the workbook or more directly to the worksheet, right? Because the cell sounds like it would be a sub element of a worksheet. That sounds about right, doesn't it? Well, active cell is actually underneath or part of the application. Doesn't matter what workbook, doesn't matter what worksheet, it's the active one. Okay, so at the application level, we can find the active cell. Well, let's try this out. When I say active cell, and I'm going to put a question mark here at the beginning because I'm going to question it. I'm going to get some information back about the active cell. And what I want to know about it is the address. Let's find address there. So we got a property of the active cell. So we're going to the application. We're going to find the active cell, which, which one is currently selected out here, and give me the address back. Let me hit my enter key and C5. So column C, row 5, that's our active cell. Let's just try, I'm going to move it to someplace else. Let's open my VBA window back up again. Hop up to that line, I'll hit my enter key again. And now I've got cell A2. Now, to take the address of the active cell a step further, if I come over here, hit my space bar, it's actually, well, let's even take it a step back further. Dot address, right? It's a property, it's a property, it's got the little finger in there, but when I hit my space bar here, it's got some parameters that I can pass while using that, that property. So I come in here and I can say, well, for row absolute, do I want row absolute, do I not? That's the dollar sign there, right? Well, default, it's set to true. So I'm getting the dollar signs in there, the absolute reference, the absolute for the column and the row. What if I don't want that? Well, I can put false and false. One for the row and one for the column. So now when I hit my enter key, I've got back my false, false. That's not what I want. Let's put our parentheses in there. There we go, there we go. So now I've got the A to the relative, the non-absolute reference of that cell. And I can mix it up. I can say, well, you know what? I want the row to be absolute. So I'll put a true inside of there. We'll do a false for the column. I'm gonna hit my enter key. And now I've got the non-absolute or the relative of the column and the absolute for the row. True for the row, not for the column. So we got the application. We got a property in there for active cell that we can then work with. In this case, we're getting the address back for it, whether it's an absolute or a relative reference. Let's just clean this up a little bit. Now, maybe I'll, I'll leave that there just for your reference if you'd like to. That's fine. I just want to drop down a line. Now here, I can do other things with that active cell, not just get its address, which is great. That could be huge within formulas. If you're dynamically creating a formula through VBA, through some procedure, automating it, you can use the address of the active cell 
to be able to pull that and perhaps put it into a formula. Very nice. Now, what else can we do with it? I can say application dot active cell dot address was a good one, but we've also got one in here for value. Another very, very common, very popular, very useful one. Um, R S T U V. All right, almost there. I saw it and then it went away. There it is, value. I'll give that a double click. And I can say application.active cell, which is currently A2. We saw that here. And I can say I want to make that equal to something. I can assign it a value. So I'm going to say give it a value of 10. I'll hit my enter key. And there we have it. So the active cell has now received that value of 10. Right there. Very nice. Very quick. And again, it's something you'll use quite a bit of as you're automating tasks within Microsoft Excel. So try this out. It's back to the application object. We're using another property, a property in this case, active cell, and then being able to get into the properties and methods of that uh, active cell. Whether you're getting something back like its address okay, or you're assigning values equals 10. Try it out. Get a feel for it. You know, open up that VBA window for the object model. Go look for active cell. You can even just filter it here. I can type in active cell. There it is right there. Uh, and it'll come up all the information there. Give you a couple of quick examples of how to work with it. So try that out. Get in there. Work with the objects. In this case, work with the property of the application object.